We hope you are healthy and we hope you come to be filled. Before I go into our crazy worship song, Pastor Nafe mentioned to me to do the patia. And I think it's only right for the last Sunday of this year that we do the patia. So just for a reminder, when you say mili, 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 you put your hands together and as Pastor Nafe always says, it has to smoke. There has to be some smoke. And I will say patia, you clap. Patia. And then luomai, luomai. All right, we're ready. Mili, 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 mili. Alright, we hope they get you all excited and energy for a treat uh, this service today. And for our praise and worship song this morning, we have a special song from Polk Street United Methodist Church in Amarillo, Texas. The title of the song is Love Came Down. Welcome home, welcome back, and welcome to our Ohana friends and visitors. As we continue to follow the safety guidelines, we ask that you follow the order of worship on the screen in front of you. And now for announcements. A friendly reminder to all who attend service that in line with our approved church reopen plan, we are always required to wear masks and we are to refrain from singing until further notice. You may wish to hum along to the hymns that appear as the lyrics will still appear on the screen. At the entrance, there is a table with tithing envelopes and a box next to it. Should you wish to give, please put your tithes, gifts and offerings in this box. Our options of giving online or sending checks to our post office box are also still available. There will, there will be no New Year's Eve night watch service. We will still have our normal Sunday service next week to mark the beginning of the new year. There will be no Bible study this week. Bible study will recommend next year, date to be confirmed. There will be a UMW meeting after the service today. Should you have any announcements, joys, or concerns that you would like to share, please contact Mele by Friday 6 p.m. of every week. Now let us continue on to our call to worship. Let everything praise God. All the mountains and hills, the valleys and plains shall resound with praises of God, to God. Let everything that has breath praise God. All creatures on earth and the skies, in the sea, shall sing praise to God. Let us hear and now praise God. We praise God with all our heart and soul and strength. Amen. Now is the time for opening him. This is hymn number 310 in our United Methodist hymnal. Please remain seated. The music will be played for us to listen to and the lyrics will appear on the screen.
Now is the time to pass the peace of Christ. As we continue to observe the safety guidelines, please remain where you are in shaka or air hug to your neighbors. <laughs> And now for our, our birthdays and anniversaries. Are there any other birthdays or anniversaries this week? My brother's birthday tomorrow. He will be 79. 79. Awesome. We wish everyone celebrating a birthday and anniversary this week a happy birthday with many more blessed and joyous years to come. Can we get a birthday tune to celebrate these birthdays? Now let's continue on to our joys. Proud Papa Tony and Grandma Adela May are overjoyed to announce that on the night of Christmas Eve, their grandson Colton J. Nakoa Fabro was born, 18 inches and seven pounds, 6.4 ounce. Congratulations, Grandma. On Wednesday the 23rd at 9 a.m., Antipat and the West Kaua AUMC volunteers were able to deliver the shoebox gifts that everyone donated to the residents of Lucy Wright Park. Thank you to everyone who donated and those who helped distribute. It was a great joy for all to share the Christmas cheer and the Lucy Wright Park residents were all very happy. We celebrate. Does anyone have any joys to share this morning? Yes, uh, no. no. Congratulations. We celebrate. Any more joys? Yes, Adela. Praise the Lord. Now for dessert. Is there any other? I have a concern. Please pray for that day in the Philippines. Uh, we lost my niece on Sunday and uh, please pray for comfort that they will find a comfort for God's love. Her name is Esther Dalion. Lord in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Another 
Ray's daughter is moving into their new house. We celebrate. Praise the Lord. Please pray for the safekeeping of everyone as we end this year and enter a new one next week. Please continue to pray for John Langaman and his family. Pray for strength, comfort, and peace during this time. Please keep praying for healing for Dan Huff. Pray and for strength and comfort for him and his family. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Are there any other concerns? If not, now is the time for the prayer of the people. Let us bow our heads and pray. Dear God, we thank you so much for hearing our cries, our needs, and also our joys as well. Through the rain and the sunshine, you're present with us no matter what. And like the hymnal that we sing this morning, we testify, we know that you live because you live in our hearts. We lift up to you, O oh God, all our concerns and as well as our joys, that it may be offerings and also a testament to relationship with you, that we have faith in you, that you take all that we have to take off of our shoulders as a church, as a community, to place it in your hands. We thank you for your grace and your love that's forgiving us every single day. Without your love, Lord, we have no guidance, we have no direction, and most of all, we don't have peace. But we thank you for reigning in our hearts today from the beginning of this new year to this last Sunday today. We know that you are faithful and you'll always remain faithful. So we put all our trust in you. We say this in Jesus' name. Amen. first lesson today is from Psalm 148, found on the page 861 in the United Methodist Hymnal. This will be read responsively. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise the Lord in the heights. Praise the Lord, all his angels. Praise the Lord, all his hosts. Praise the Lord. Sun and moon, praise the Lord, all shining stars. Praise the Lord, highest heavens, and all waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, who commanded and they were created. Who established them forever and ever, and fixed their bounds which cannot be passed. Praise the Lord from the earth. Sea monsters and all deeps. Fire and hail, snow and smoke, stormy wind fulfilling God's command. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars. Beasts and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds. Kings of the earth and all peoples, 
princes and all rulers of the earth. Young men and maidens together, old men and children. Let them praise the Lord, the name of the Lord, whose name alone is exalted, whose glory is above earth and heaven. God has raised up a horn for his people. Praise for all his faithful ones, for the people of Israel who are near their God. Praise the Lord. The epistle reading for today is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1 to 13. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then, we'll, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide, these three. And the greatest of these is love. This is the word of God for the people of God. God is good all the time. God is great every day. God is great. Milly, 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 I want to take this opportunity to extend my heartfelt gratitude towards each and every one of you for the year that has been. We started 2020 with a lot of expectation and hope for our church. And even though it didn't turn out the way we thought it would, God stayed with us. And we have and we have all made to this day only because of his grace, his love, and protection. And my heart is full in the knowledge that every single person here and online stayed faithful to God's calling in their life and throughout the many, many storms 
that we had faced in 2020. Mel and I are very, very grateful for each and every one of you. The ministry is alive and growing because of all of you. And the beautiful body of Christ, we're able to serve God and win hearts for him and extend his kingdom in this earth only because of you. There's a tongue in saying that, that says, it means a village is not a village without its people. A soil is a land without its people. It's not a country. And the church is not a church without the body of Christ. And that is all of you. So thank you. At Sunday school, they were teaching how God created everything, including human beings. Little Johnny, a child in the class, seemed especially interested when they told him how Eve was created out of one of Adam's ribs. Later in the week, his mother noticed him lying down as though he were sick. And the mother said, Johnny, what's the matter? Johnny said, I don't feel well, mommy. I think I'm having a wife. In Shakespeare, Romeo and Juliet, Juliet famously expressed her love in these words. My bounty is as bounteless as the sea. My love as deep. The more I give to thee, the more I have. For both are infinite. You know, Tongans, we love to write about love. Like Juliet, Tongans often use metaphors from the ocean, from the farm, to express their love. In fact, when I was dating Mele, I used to read this, uh, to Mele, this Tongan love poems, and basically using the oceans and, uh, to describe how deep my love is, like the ocean. But now Mele, we're married now and she's pregnant. I tried to read it to her again and she said, yeah, yeah, whatever, just come massage my feet. You know, Juliet does an interesting thing here. After she likens her love to the ocean, she goes on to say that it is boundless and infinite. Well, there's a problem with this claim. Because we know as islanders that the ocean is not boundless and is not infinite. It's incredibly deep, as we know. However, this claim does, not re does reveal an interesting concept of this thing that we call love. You know, Hannah, we as human beings have a really interesting history about our ideas of what love is. If we look back to human history, we have writers, poets, musicians, artists of all kinds expressing their understanding of what love is about through their books, poems, songs, paintings, etc. From the great poet and playwright Shakespeare to your favorite musical artist today. Everyone in between and probably the years to come. One thing they have in common is that when they write and sing about love, the most don't often refer to the nature of love qualitatively, the quality of love, but more so the quantity of love. Like who do we love? Why do we love? Where is love? How we need to receive and give more love. How is love is the most important thing in this life? And these are all quantitative questions. And this is well and good to have and to know, but the problem with this is that the thought of love quantitatively has become so popular 
that we don't often and rarely step back and think about the quality of love. Thankfully, 1,500 years before Shakespeare and the famous love story of Romeo and Juliet and all the famous singers, writers, and poets who wrote about love, there was another great writer and a philosophical thinker who happened to be a disciple and an apostle of Jesus. His name is Paul. He wrote about the nature of the quality of love, not the quantity of love. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4 to 8, Paul writes, The love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not easily anchored. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil. Love always trusts. Love always hopes. And love always perseveres. Paul talks about the quality of love. Qualities that can easily resonate with our human hearts and thoughts. But then Paul took it to another level. He set what can only be described as an impossible standard for the authentic and the purest form of love. He said, love is not self-seeking. Love always rejoices with the truth. Love always protects. And love never fails. I don't know about you, West Kauai Hana, but that is the kind of love that in my own human strength, I am not capable of. And this is exactly the kind of love that Paul was pointing to all the years that he was preaching the gospel. The love that came from heaven on Christmas Day. When God came into the world in love, he demonstrated and exemplified love in its purest form. Sacrificial love, selfish love, love that looks to protect. He came down in love, not for his sake, but for our sake. And he did that in the most humblest way, born in a manger, died on a cross like a criminal. And these verses are verses that a lot of people refer to as the love letter. You hear them in wedding vows on Valentine's Day. And people use them in romantic poems like I used to do to Mele. But the biblical context and the intention of this letter, the intention of this letter has nothing to do with romantic or relationship kind of love. What Paul was actually writing to was a church in the city of Corinth that was divided so much amongst themselves. What happened was that some false preachers had entered this church and preached love quantitatively. And it was so appealing to some of the members of this church that they started to abandon the Christ love that Paul had preached and taught. And this is why Paul wrote to them to remind them the quality of love which Jesus had brought to them. A kind of love that can only be found in the person of Jesus. The kind of love that is so creator than laying that is no greater than laying down one's life for one's friends. A kind of love that Jesus showed to us on the cross in Calvary. West Kauai Ohana, as you prepare to say goodbye to the year that was and welcome to new year of 2021, 
I pray that you find this love that is in the person of Jesus. I pray that you see the quality of love in which Paul urges the church in Corinth to remember and not abandon. The Christ love, a love that is not self-seeking, a love that always rejoices with the truth, a love that always protects, a love that never fails. For Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, never fails us. Amen. Now is the time for our closing hymn. This is hymn number 384 in our United Methodist hymnal. Please remain seated. The music will be played for us to listen to and the lyrics will appear on the screen.
In following with the safety guidelines, we will exit the sanctuary row by row. Please wait for the ushers to let you know when you can leave. And on your way out, please wave to the camera to say hello to our Ohana tuning in from home. Mahalo. West Kauai Ohana. May you go forth in peace in the grace, the hope of our Lord Jesus Christ. As you journey to the new year, 2021, may you journey with the divine love of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank <laughs> you.